Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my session. And because we only have about 40 minutes, and Mr. Lawler asked me to demonstrate how an IB lesson is taught in our school. So um, I was thinking it's better to uh, deliver or lead this PD by uh, showing you the real IB lesson, a P6 lesson. And so you will just pretend to be the student. So you're going to learn it or look at the structure from a student's perspective. So in the following 40 minutes, just be a student. Behave the student. Okay? All right. So you can you repeat again? Sorry? <laughs> Your name Lenny stole my pencil. I don't understand. Oh, I don't understand. <laughs> Go to Miss Marley's office. Yeah, that's my bell. <laughs> All right, good afternoon, P6. Good afternoon, P6. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So um, today, instead of... Good afternoon, P6. Good afternoon, Ms. Julia. So um, today, instead of telling you what is the key concept that we're going to work on, I want you to guess, to make some predictions of the key concept by looking at the four WH questions, right? Usually there are five WH questions, right? Can someone tell me what are they? What? 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 Where? Who? Where? 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 Why? Why? And when. when. Excellent. So my first WH question is a who question. In Harry Potter or Avengers, who is your favorite character? Can anyone share your yes, Jack? Iron Man. Why? I like his attitude. All right. How about um, Melina? From there, I need to choose from Yeah, the, choose from the uh, list. Hermione. Hermione, why, why do you like Hermione? Because she's knowledgeable Excellent. and caring. Caring, okay. It seems like Hermione is an IB student. So, um, by the way, on each slide, you will see a little bubble. It tells you the tips or strategies I usually use. Okay, let's move on to the second question. It's a which question. So, which way do you prefer to read? Do you prefer to read a paper book or do you prefer to read the digital ones? And this time, I want you to share your ideas with your elbow partner. I'm going to give you two minutes. Let's start. And then you just go there, right? Also, yeah. yeah. and then you just go there, right? Also, the other one is the other one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Miss Julia, uh, yes. it depends on the situation. If I love the book cover design, or sometimes I really prefer the font that mm -hmm. they, they created per, on purpose, then mm -hmm. I would prefer a physical copy. Mm -hmm. But then when it's time, when I want, um, say I'm traveling, or I, I don't want to carry a heavy book, mm -hmm. I, I would prefer reading an e-book. Excellent. Who else wants to share? How about Jack? Yes. I uh, prefer having a real book in my hand. I mm -hmm. like the feel of it. And uh, staring at a screen mm -hmm. for hours and hours and mm -hmm. hours really hurts the eyes. Excellent. Yeah. How about um, Jane? Um, I would prefer a paper book too mm -hmm. because I feel like the texture, I like it more. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I, feel I can be more focused on the paper book. Excellent. Let's move on to the third question, which is a where question. So where do you think the third culture kids consider home? Remember, in our first unit, where we are in place and time, we talk about migration, we talk about identity, we talk about third culture kids. So uh, we also watch a video on YouTube about an interview to the third culture kids. So where do you think the third culture kids consider home? Do you think it's their, where their family members are, or their hometown, or some, I remember some kids said airport is their home. And this time, I want to, I I want you to <laughs> talk to your Apple partner again. But this time, I will ask the student to share your Apple partner's idea. Okay? So you are not sharing your idea, but your partner's. Yes. What is a third culture kid? What is a third culture kid? Like you, uh, let's say Sam. Sam was, uh, was born in uh, America. But he grew up in China. Mm -hmm. That's what we call third culture kids. So is a, like a what's mixed. The third culture? Uh, I mean, the, the parent, one, like mom is from Australia, dad is from China, but the, the kid, uh, he grew up in Japan. Okay. Third okay. culture kids. Okay, I'm going to give you two minutes. And remember, this time we share our mm -hmm. friends' ideas. I think it depends from like kid to kid. Mm -hmm. I think it depends how strong the culture is from the time group. I think it's because sometimes like I feel like yeah, I feel for example, South Africa, yeah. if they have a so 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 group of yeah. friends, yeah. mm -hmm. so have ten friends, I'm going to keep doing that. If you can choose that, because it's in the Habitat. Yeah, it depends on the family, mm -hmm. right? It depends what you mean. Yeah, so and the community. You, the community. Yeah, but uh, I think the family culture is very around important. Around the yeah, yeah. yeah uh, some families, they are very the traditional and like, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, family kind of oriented, yeah, yeah. Uh, oriented. So they want their kid, no matter where they live, carry the you know inheritance of the culture. Yeah. Yeah. And I also think it's about like how strong your culture is, because there are some cultures that are easier to to make. Maybe where my family are, and where. Design. For example, in the United States, yeah. some yeah. some so like they were example, together with the they were like the primary to travel to let the kids like, like, so like, so like all of us live in another country, China, Japan. Like it's very different from like Western culture, so they don't mm -hmm. let the kids at yeah. yeah. But as we say, like where you grew up, yeah, yeah. keeping their tradition, yeah. living in growing up in Japan, roots and roots. Yeah, that's true. But it's all about perspective, right? Like, uh, yep. uh, yeah, it depends on the parents' you know, decision. Mm -hmm. If they want their kids to be involved in that environment, mm -hmm. then they can, you know, China just go uh, create that environment mm -hmm. for their kids. Yeah. yeah, but that's not third culture, that's two cultures. Mm -hmm. And the family culture values where they and the culture where they live, yeah. yeah. What if, like, because you sometimes move to I another place, like, a lot of culture? Yeah, then that would be the third culture. Well, Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Can I ask Jack, what is your partner's idea or thought about this question? Around <coughs> Yeah, your elbow pun, maybe Sarah's. Um, what we discussed was where the child spends the majority <coughs> of his time growing up mm -hmm. would be considered his home. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned that it might be where the child has the most good memories or mm -hmm. nice memories of growing up, things he associates with. Where his friends are, yeah. where they live. Um, yeah, that's about, that's about right. it. Thank you. 
How about Susanna? What did Lena say about this question? Well, she said uh, a lot depends on the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the family mm -hmm. wants the kid mm -hmm. to yeah. be like, you know, to carry the, you know, uh, inherited, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, country they are coming from, mm -hmm. then uh, they will just focus on their culture, traditions. But uh, yeah, if uh, they want to um, get involved mm -hmm. in, you know, the target culture, they can easily, uh, you know, make that, create that environment. So it uh, depends on the kid and also the family. Excellent. I like, I like this idea. How about Kathy? What did Eden say about this question? Um, uh, she just started uh, sharing example, but we haven't finished the conversation yet. Right. So maybe we can do it later. Let's move on to the last question. So the last question is... Uh, sorry, is, me. Yes. Uh, uh, so when you ask... Yes. I, do, I would just ask a very... Sure, sure, sure. So uh, the kids, they, they share with their elbow partners, mm -hmm. but what if you go and they are not talking about like the question or they are not talking at all? Mm -hmm. So How I'm, can you prompt mm -hmm. the sharing culture? <laughs> yeah, so usually uh, I make the sitting order to make sure there is one student who will maybe lead the conversation. And sometimes uh, I just make the nationalities. And if the kids are very shy or they don't speak any English at all, like new students, I'll ask them to join another pair. So three people they will share together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Our last question is a what question. So what is most important for you? Is it physical well-being, emotional well-being, or social well-being? As we know that in this unit, we're talking about well-being and puberty. So what do you think is most important for you? Before you answer this question, can someone help me to read our central idea loud to, to your classmates? It's on this display board. Understanding? So this is our central idea. So I wanted to discuss as a group this time. No more elbow partner discussion. So this time I wanted to discuss as a group and I want one group volunteer to share some of the ideas mm -hmm. your so friends nice. share. Alright? So which one do you think is most important when you go through puberty? Do you value physical well-being more, or emotional, or social? Any questions? So the period of time is going through puberty. Yes. Thank you. All right, this time you may have three minutes. All right? <laughs> we need one volunteer from each group. <laughs> So we need to choose one, yeah. or we can choose more than one. Yeah, you can choose more than one. Wow, this is to me, everything is important. They are interconnected. If you don't have good physical well-being, how can you, you know, have emotional, right? Yeah. Good well-being, good condition. Like you know, these are conditions, right? That are like you know, yeah, interrelated. Look at the picture. You're trying to find I mean, that middle like, point. Yeah. Yeah. The balance between well being, we physical and times. mental well being. I would say, okay, a uh, grown up, like would say, okay, physical. Because be you, you can you can heal from a broken heart, but you can't heal from you know, a broken body. <laughs> but a child doesn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, we're students. So yeah, we say like your body health is number one, and then later everything else is the volunteer. But then one, you cannot have, you can only have zero. But then a lot of people, when when you as a child, having mental well-being can shape their future. Attitude towards school, towards society, learning in general. If they have bad mental, mental health or bad attitudes about mental health, then I will feel like that.
the most important because they are also developing physical life. That would be the first thing to consider. Um, compared with social will be to compare with social value to find the balance part. Of course, the balance is no, there's no one part more important than the other. Um, so like equally important. Like you are growing to the mm -hmm. beauty of your relationships, not only <laughs> from the family, but also bring it into a larger community of your I would say this is a basis no, what you do is about, to make those two have right 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 to make if you mind is healthy, healthy, right? Healthy, 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 to share our results? Yes. Um, also, I have a follow-up question, very okay. quick. Um, so first of all, we talked about, so for teenagers who are going through puberty time, uh, the most important will be physical well-being mm -hmm. first, because uh, there are scientific data to prove us uh, getting enough sleep or getting enough exercise will help you um, not only like uh, to, to develop physically, but also it will also affect your emotion and also furthermore affecting your social interactions mm -hmm. with others. So we see that as a basis. Without a good physical well-being, um, none of those two will be further developed. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to go to NYP, I think? To do scientific <laughs> data. How about this group? Yes. Sarah. Sarah, oh. Sarah. 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 <laughs> yeah. For our group, we think the, also the physical well-being mm -hmm. is really important for the puberty stu students. Uh, since, you know, they are undergoing a very quick development, both physically and mm -hmm. mentally. But, you know, uh, they have a huge change in their body, mm -hmm. so they are experiencing about the physical well-being also helps them to, to experience about their emotional well-being as well as their social well-being. So we think that the physical ones will be the most important for them. Thank you very much. How about group That's three? <laughs> well, we, we, we said that uh, emotional and social mm -hmm. well-being is very important mm -hmm. when you're a teenager yes. because um, their community and friends mm -hmm. and classmates is everything yes. for a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Thank you for sharing. And Ms. Julia, yes. the, the, my follow-up question would be, so supposing you're in a group, you always have one mm -hmm. student uh, mm -hmm. who is actively contributing mm -hmm. to the question, yeah. but then there's also students who may be out of be uh, because of personality or because of yeah. a lack of knowledge, how would you encourage them to mm -hmm. participate mm -hmm. and yes. get engaged? So sometimes I knowledge. just pick the students randomly. I give mm -hmm. them a number, maybe 1A, 2B, or 3C, and I just say maybe 4D or 5C. So the students who has the card will just answer the questions. In this way, we make sure every student shares something in the group. Yes? Yeah, so. but if you have an Yale student mm -hmm. who cannot express herself or mm -hmm. himself, so how can, yeah, what is the solution? Yeah, usually we have... Let's say it's my turn, mm -hmm. but my English is poor, mm -hmm. and I can't express, you mm -hmm. know, answer your question. Mm -hmm. So what do you do usually in this kind of situation? So if it's a group discussion, we usually have students m with mixed nationalities. There might be Korean peers to help to translate, or maybe I can help um, the student to translate the, the question or something into their native language. And if they cannot speak, express themselves in English, they can just share it in their native language and ask some student to, to, to translate at the beginning stage. 
And do you consider it as a, a differentiation or it's mm -hmm. just a strategy that uh, you would use? I think it's just a, a strategy mm -hmm. I use. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So at this stage, can someone guess which is the key concept that we're going to focus on today? We have function, we have form, we have perspective, we have change, we have responsibility. Just based on the four questions, can you guess, tell me which might be the key concept that we're going to work on today? Based on the four questions we discussed. Mm. And just show uh, function, function, different oh. ideas. Connection. 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 What else? Perspective. Perspective. What else? Mm. Think we, about. Are we choosing from those? No, 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 three? no, no, no. no, no. It's a Due to the one. questions. Right? Yeah, just a one. inclusive. Yeah. Inclusive is not a key concept. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being a risk taker. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. Think about our <laughs> four questions. We talk about your preference of reading. We shared your ideas about a favorite characters. Mm -hmm. And we talk about where do third culture kids consider home? Either perspective or connection. Excellent. The key concept mm -hmm. we are going to yes, work on today is perspectives. So perspective means different points of view. And this is a key question for this key concept perspe uh, perspective. So people may have different points of view towards reading. Maybe Sarah likes to read paper book, but Jack likes to read e-books. For uh, characters, when we watch the same movie, maybe Kara has a different character from Cassie. And when we talk about well-being, some people think physical well-being is more important, but some people think social well-being is more important. So there's no correct answer for each question. It's all about people's perspective, okay? And remember, perspective is one of the key concepts. And now, what I want to do is, I want you to create your own key question for this concept. We know the official one is, what are the points of view? But can you, based on your own understandings, in your own words, create several questions? to show me your understanding of this key concept. Here's one example for, uh, I use function as an example. We know the official one is, how does it work? But I can also create several questions by myself. How to use something, it's still function. How does something function, right? The purposes of using something, etc. All right? So I'm going to give you five minutes, please, Write your questions, as many as you can, on the sticky notes. Okay? You may start. About perspective. Yeah, about perspective. Okay, while you're writing the questions, can I ask one student to Repeat what is the instruction. Jack, can you repeat my instruction? What are we going to do? Write your own questions to demonstrate your understanding of the key concept perspective. Excellent. How about Ada? Uh, what are we doing now? Yeah, just use your own language to show that how, what is the perspective. Very good. Thank you. You have five minutes. This is my good side. In this one. <laughs> Thank you. 
any questions you have, Ray? No. Any questions? That's okay. I created a whole question. Uh, how does the cultural differences or experiences um, influence one's view um, toward things? Very good. Maybe one more, Jack. Uh, what do you like? Which do you prefer? What do you think? Mm, excellent. I think these questions really show your understandings of the key concept perspective. So at this stage, as we have already talked about the key concept perspective, but how can we make some connections to persuasive writing? We know persuasive writing is one type of writing, right? What does persuasive mean, Melinda? Oh, uh, Susanna, sorry. You try to convince mm -hmm. someone else to do something. All right, Susanna. Yeah, I was to say the same. Same, right? So persuasive or persuade means to convince someone to make someone believe in what you believe in. Mm -hmm. And when you set out to persuade someone, you want them to accept your perspectives. But to my, I'm so sorry, teacher. Yeah. Uh, to my understanding, persuasive writing is more like factual. You need to bring facts to persuade that person rather than sharing your opinion about the matter. But you have your perspective uh, about the, the question. For example, uh, should all students wear uniform? You may say yes. You may agree or disagree. This is about. But that's respect. like opinion. Mm -hmm. What type of writing is? Is it opinion? There is. You can have opinions, but base but base those opinions on facts that support the opinion. Facts, right? Yes. So uh, persuasive writing. I believe it's, it's, it's more like a combination of your opinion, like the, your point, where your point is at, and then you support it using evidence and example. Mm -hmm and then structure the paper. I think your statement can be a perspective, but your supporting details should be factual. Mm -hmm. Or you can also provide some daily uh, examples to them. Yes, Jack? Well, it'll be more persuasive if you can present it as a fact. Yes. I mean, if it is yes, an opinion. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, so persuasive writing is about asking people, persuading people to accept your opinion and perspectives. So let's look at this example here. How would you persuade your friends it is not a good idea to check mobile phones constantly during a conversation? Can you try to make some connection to social well-being? The topic we talked about in the classroom before. Do we need to write it down or can we just answer? Yeah, just answer it. Yes, Jack. Um, if you're having a conversation with someone and they're constantly looking at their phone, mm -hmm. uh, you're not making eye contact with them, that person feels that you are disconnected from the conversation right. and you don't care. Right. How about Cassie? Uh, I would maybe start with a statement saying mm -hmm. constantly checking mobile phones means mm -hmm. you are being aloof or mm -hmm. uh, showing your indifferences or not paying attention to the conversation that you're having and then support that way so for the details. Mm -hmm. So the, the details Jack and Cassie just mentioned are all about supporting your perspective because you're, in your perspective you think constantly checking the mobile phone is not a good behavior, right? Mm -hmm. So let's move on and look at our learning outcome of the lesson. Produce pieces of published work to meet identified criteria based on expectations related to content, organization, style, use of conventions, and blah, blah, blah. And I know there are several categories here, but in this lesson, we just focus on content. We just focus on content. How are you going to persuade other people? How are you going to provide details to support your 
per, uh, perspective, your statements. Okay? So in the following, we only have about five minutes, two minutes, can we work as a group? So first, I want to read the statement. This is your group. I want to read the statement, and you make two bubble maps. Make two big bubble maps, and write your perspective in the middle. So let me use the group one statement as an example. Children should be allowed to bring their mobile phone to school. Do you agree or disagree? Right? If you are great, please write a statement in the big bubble and your supporting details. And you're going to make another one for disagree. Yes, John? What if you agree and disagree at the same time? Agree and disagree. So we make two bubble maps. One bubble map is for agree. One bubble map is for disagree. Okay. So we just, just share ideas. Okay? Mm -hmm. And please check your group members and let's move to the... Uh, the group. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do you think so we have the time? Yeah, we, we don't have time to, <laughs> to vote. Okay. Ah. <laughs> oh. I mean, maybe you don't have, we don't have about five minutes left. But maybe yeah. we just kind of show what yeah. 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 time should be longer. Absolutely. <laughs> More rest for the teacher. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so for usually when I, I usually group my students based on their number one language. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, their English level and their readiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, based on these three um, categories. How do you group them on their readiness? Mm -hmm. Like if um, for some students they might be more interested in a certain topic, mm -hmm. maybe I'll group them together. You can tell from their reactions during the mini lesson. And sometimes I'll mix the group. For someone who's not very active, I'll put them together because if the one student who's not active joining um, a, a group with lots of like talkative students the person might not talk so i will group the students uh, together and me or my team will just work mm -hmm. with them to make sure everybody will talk uh -huh. well correct me if i'm wrong to assess mm -hmm. uh, the student's readiness maybe yeah. you see Previously, uh, Miss Julia has asked a, a bunch of questions and then also many activities before this group work. So judging from students' performance and responses mm -hmm. to all those questions, then we can see who is more prepared and then we, maybe we can partner them up with a less prepared person and then just to balance the group. I, w I would say the readiness is showing the, from the previous mm -hmm. activity. That is the the, uh, the stage uh, where teacher is collecting data through observations, observations. or maybe you can also make it like vis visible, mm -hmm. maybe put, keep a tally of this student has answered mm -hmm. this many questions right. already to show their readiness. Yeah. 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 Any questions? Should we do the bubble thing now or do we have to do it? Yeah, we don't have time to do it. But just, uh, I want to say, yeah, that's it for the, for the class. And I just want to say, when you teach the key concept, just make sure you teach the concept explicitly. You mention the IB terms. And same as when you teach the learner profile attributes or ATLs, you need to make sure you mention the, the term. You so mention and also teach? Yeah, mention and teach. And I want to share one strategy I use for both concepts and ATL. There is a, a, a strategy called split screen. I don't know if you heard about it. Like, basically, you split your screen. On the left side, you write down the concept or the ATLs explicitly. Mm -hmm. So students can see, oh, this is a concept or ATL that we're going to work on. And on the right side, you write down your instructions or activities, mm -hmm. right? So for this one, I use a different way to uh, like promote the uh, students. So I give them some questions to let them guess. So it's a different way. But sometimes we can just tell students the concept or ATL straightforward and then tell them the activity. Yeah, this is uh, just two different ways of teaching concept or ATLs explicitly. Can I ask yes. a question? So explicitly teaching concept, do you 
teach that like every day or just the beginning of unit and the middle of unit mm -hmm. and also the end of unit because you know we also have a content skill that the students need to acquire to support them to understand the concept mm -hmm. so explicitly teaching concept should we do it like every lesson actually or you don't need to do it every lesson but if you can somewhere make the connections to one of the IB elements that will be better let's say I'm in this unit, as you can tell from the display board, we don't have perspective, but we have a language class about persuasive, persuasive writing. Mm -hmm. So I can easily make some connections. So the more connections you made between the content to the IB elements, more like students will be more familiar with those terms, and it's easier for them to transfer what they learn, or transfer the knowledge they learn from different subjects. Like for, for example, form in Mandarin class, they learn the form of the Chinese characters, maybe left and the right, top and down, the structure. And in math class, we look at the form of a fraction. There's a fraction line, the number on the top, number of the, on the bottom. So they know form is about what is in life. In visual art class, maybe they look at different types of artwork, sculpture, or maybe painting. In music class, they look at a musical sheet or note and they know the form of each note. So in this way, we're building their conceptual understandings. Yes, any other questions? Um, I, I'm curious about yes. um, how do you guys assess a conceptual understanding? Assess conceptual understanding? Yes. So uh, for our summative assessment, we use the GRASP assessment. So conceptual understanding also means students are able to transfer what they learn to the real, like authentic scenario. In our summative assessment, grasp assessment, when we give them the criteria, there is one column just for conceptual understanding. Maybe I know what is the perspective of something. I know what is something like. I know how does something work. Yeah, in this way you can check their understanding. Maybe if you have one minute, can you please scan the QR code and go to Padlet and type what is your takeaway on WeChat? Yeah, WeChat. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My browser is not supported. Mm -hmm. My oh. browser is not supported. Thank you. I'll take a photo and do it later. Thank you, Ms. Julia. <笑>我就关了，对，这这场结束了。